Good morning. My name is Al Salmonson, Interim Pastor at Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church, Beaverton. Following the instructions of our bishop and our governmental leaders, we have suspended formal worship services through Easter Sunday. The video which you are about to view consists solely of my sermon for the fourth Sunday in Lent. The family of Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church welcomes you to this video, and it is our hope and our prayer that you are following the rules our governmental health officials want us all to follow to keep yourself safe from the virus. And in keeping yourself safe, you are also being of help in keeping your brother and your sister safe. With this in mind, let us begin our time together this morning in a moment of silent prayer. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are thy holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in thy truth, for thy word is eternal truth. Amen. Whether you're rich or poor, black or white, young or old, religious or atheist, gay or straight, woman or man, Republican or Democrat. No one is excluded. No one sits on the sidelines in this game or in the dugout when the ground rules are what they are. The saving of lives. Beginning this past December, our world began becoming incredibly small, to the point where today, if we didn't understand it before, we certainly understand it today. We are part of a global society. We've been forced by common sense to do something we have always instinctively known we are supposed to do. And to be something instinctively known that we are supposed to be. Our brother's keeper. Our sister's keeper. And just where did this concept originate? The phrase, my brother's keeper? Well, right here, in the Bible, in God's words, in the very beginning, in Genesis, is the story of Cain and Abel, where God questions Cain about Abel's whereabouts. 
So where is he? God asks Cain. And Cain answers, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Why should I have to know that? But as you know, he had just killed his brother. Cain lied to God. And so the phrase, my brother's keeper, evolved over time, down through the ages, generally understood to mean, in respect to all humankind, that we are to be our brother's and our sister's keeping keeper. Meaning, simply, that we are responsible to, we are challenged to take care of, we are instructed to help our brothers and our sisters, whoever they are, wherever they are, and whenever. And if there's ever been a time, and if there's ever been a time when we've got to rise above our sometimes selfish instincts and ambitions and be united in one spirit, united in one effort, that time is upon us. That time is now, where no one can sit in the dugout nor meander on the sidelines in this game, the game in which the ground rules are explicitly clear, the business of saving lives. The best way I can think of how to do this how to be my brother's or my sister's keeper is to reflect upon the way in which God is keeping me. How God is my keeper. I can think of no better illustration. I can think of no clearer clarification. I can think of no better description than the psalm that I read at the beginning of this message, appointed for this fourth Sunday in Lent, the 23rd Psalm that was imprinted in many of our hearts in our youth, some by our moms and some by our dads, some by our Sunday school teachers, and even in my case, one of my third grade public school teachers when she asked us to memorize this psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I ask myself, what's the meaning of shepherd when we say the Lord is my shepherd? I'm going to use a biblical illustration, a biblical definition recorded so beautifully in the Gospel of Luke, the Christmas story, where it reads, And in that region there were shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. So what's the biblical description of a shepherd? A shepherd is one who keeps watch. A shepherd is one who keeps watch over his flock by day and by night. Wow! The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is keeping watch over me by day and by night. Wow! There are so many things going on in my world today, in your world, in our world, for God to be watching over. Uppermost in all of our minds 
is the threat of being diagnosed with the virus, causing early and untimely death for thousands, bringing sadness in the loss of loved ones, initiating hardships encountered by survivors. I can't really feel what that's like for those whose shepherd is the same shepherd as my shepherd or maybe questioning his watch over them. Six months ago, the jobless rate in our country was something like 3.5%. But I read just yesterday, in the wink of an eye, it's ballooned to 6%. Imagine, imagine in a matter of three months, having a meaningful job, having a wonderful job, a job you loved with favorable benefits, gone all gone with no indication that it'll even return. I can't feel, I can't feel what that's like for those whose shepherd is the same shepherd as my shepherd may be questioning if he's watching over them. Imagine Imagine having owned a successful business. Or imagine having just started a business, but having to shut your doors with no timetable for the neon open sign to reappear. Just imagine the letting go of staff, your friends, your hard workers who helped you build that business. Just imagine the fixed overhead that now you cannot meet. Imagine the pressure, the anxiety, the frustration, the disappointment. I can't feel what that's like for those whose shepherd is the same shepherd as my shepherd may be questioning if he's watching over them. Or how about the elderly? You don't have to be too old to be included in that group. You're looking at one of them. Imagine how someone has amassed a nest egg for their senior years and wisely invested it in the market rather than stuffing it under the mattress or put it in a bank which isn't really much different than stuffing it under the mattress. Imagine the despair how in three weeks time they've watched the egg in the nest both crack and spill creating uncertainty and the question of God's watch over them and the question, what am I going to do now? I really can't feel what it's like for those whose shepherd is the same shepherd as mine may be questioning, yet this I can say, this I can say, I believe in God. I believe in God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength. This I can still say. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But sometimes I wonder. This I can still say. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. But I sometimes question. This I can still say. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. 
but I sometimes doubt. This I can still say. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yet sometimes I worry. This I can still say. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. But sometimes I'm scared. This I can still say. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. But sometimes I waver and forget. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This I can say, and not question. This is God's promise. It may seem strange to some, even irrational, but this in the midst of my sometimes questioning faith, this is one thing I will never question. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for my Lord is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. The Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord has anointed my head with oil. My cup has not only been half full, but fully full. My cup overflows. Surely goodness, surely mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, little flock. For the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock. Have good cheer, little flock. Have good cheer, little flock. For the Father will keep you in his love forever. Have no fear, little flock. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the midst of troublesome and worrisome days, we thank you for your gift of faith to us that sustains us, that holds us, that comforts us, that guides us through troublesome waters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.